Hi everyone. I've recently started exploring the world of battery operated projects like this one that you see in the back. And for that, I'm using the standard 18650 lithium cells that you can find from old uh, laptop batteries. These are all salvaged. And when I use them in the project, one of the main problems that I faced was how to mount them and how to electrically connect them to the circuit. Because as you know, these batteries need to be welded in and I don't have a spot welder for them. So I had to resort in soldering directly on the contents, which is not good for the battery because you can damage the chemistry that's inside. To prevent damaging the batteries, I've decided to build a dedicated PCB that will use one of these holders. This is the CB18650PC2, which is a holder for a single 18650 cell. And also one of these modules. These are the so-called power bank modules where they have this chip on board that's in charge for charging the battery and making sure that it doesn't go under voltage. Additionally, because it has a USB as an output, it can also deliver five volts. So the entire project can, uh, the entire project can be powered directly with the single board without needing any stepping up. These modules are typically used in power banks like this, where you have the module on one end of the power bank and then you have terminals that are soldered in the case and then you can place the battery inside and now you have a power bank that uh, you can use with not such a great capacity but still a usable power bank and that should be more than enough for our projects these modules are extremely cheap and i'll have purchase links down in the description but there is not an easy way that you can mount this to the project and have the USBs accessible. So to fix that, I've partnered with PCBWay, which are the sponsor of today's video, to build a dedicated PCB that will carry this holder and also will have a mounting place for this charger board. So let's see what we've got. We have few extra, so a pen. We've got these two rulers where we have all of the footprints. Thank you for that. We have some nice stickers. And most importantly, we have the PCBs. Now let's open them up and see how they look. At the moment, PCB Way is currently running a special promotion on four and six layers PCB because they moved to a new factory and now they have greater capacity. So if you are in need of such PCBs, then be sure to visit their website, pcbway.com and check on the awesome product that they have. And here is the board. I must say that they look absolutely beautifully in this white silk screen and black printed text. Immediately, what I can notice is that I should not have made this in copper. I have markings here, B1 and B2. These are for the battery holder. Let's see if that fits. Yeah, that fits perfectly, but you can't really read that on the copper layer. So it would have been nicer to be on the actual silk screen instead of the copper, but that's not an issue. And here on the left, you can see that we have a lot of positions to solder stuff in. And the idea is that once we have the holder in place, that the power bank module can be placed in the board like this. So we align the B1 and B2 contacts. And now we can either directly solder that to the board on the exposed pads or use some small wire to thread it in and uh, connect that. The standard output of this power bank modules is through this USB and it, they do not have any pads on them that we can use to extract power. So in order to bring out the output of five volts to the board so we can use it, we need to solder wires directly to the contacts here on the USB terminal. We have positive and negative here that we can then solder to the board. We have these two positions here and here for doing just that, but in a project, we may want to have this reversed. So 
this can also be sol soldered in like that so i also connected these pads together and they go out here in the output so one of the problems that this module have with microcontroller project is that they require a minimum amount of current that be drawn from them so that they stay on once they detect that there is a load on the end so to fix that i've added a position where we can place a resistor on the output basically this is just an additional load that we can connect on the output to load up the module so it has a minimum amount of current i know that that's not efficient but that will do for version number one for a later revision i have an idea how we can fix that and make it a lot more efficient but that will be a topic for another video now let's try and solder one up and see how that goes and uh, see if we can solder the wires as expected here on the terminals and see how the final product looks one thing that i forgot to mention is this j1 position here uh, this is position for pin headers where you can have a switch that will turn on and off the entire circuit when needed so you can either directly solder wires to it and have them running off to your switch wherever it's placed on the board or you can have pin headers and then connect the switch that way or if you don't want to use a switch at all we can just jump over with this on these contacts with some solder and that should make the connection from one of the terminals of the battery to the input of the board additionally since this can be reversed uh, there is no direct polarity marking on the board and you'll have to look for the polarity marks on the battery holder and for that i have marked the contacts as b1 and b2 and b1 goes to b1 and b2 goes to b2 and then you will need to make sure that you align the board to whatever orientation you've placed the holder and placing the battery later on so for example if i choose that b1 will be the positive one I need to orient the board so that the positive contact of the battery contacts with B1 and that's the default position for the board. okay so here is the finished power bank um, i've soldered the module with the positive on top so that the out one is the positive output now let's add a battery this one is salvaged as i said from an old laptop battery and in theory we should now have voltage actually five volts so i'll plug in this meter and see what it says and that says 5.18 which is perfect so we can theoretically now power any five volt device uh, with this power bank but i'm not sure if you noticed there we had a quick blink on the meter let's wait a bit and see uh, there it goes so that's the issue that I mentioned earlier where these boards will turn off just briefly if they are not having uh, sufficient current drawing in. So first let me check what's the output voltage here on the board. I'll use my multimeter. Let's verify that the output works as expected. I'll have the uh, meter here connected so out one should be positive and out two should be negative we see the 5.1 volts out on the output and theoretically we can use any 
of the remaining terminals here because they are all tied together. So all of these on the left are positive and all of these on the right end are negative. So we have multiple choices to add and remove wires as we need on the project. And also on the meter, we can notice that periodically the voltage will drop briefly. And in theory, that's enough for the projects that we have here to be reset. Sometimes that might not be an issue, but sometimes it might. So now let's try and add a resistor on the output so we can make sure that this stays on and it doesn't turn off. Loading up the power bank module with sufficient current draw doesn't have to be anything uh, fancy or specific. As you can see, I've just press fitted two of these flashing LEDs that I used in that play button that I've made earlier, where I had the same setup where the idea originated. And you can see that that's enough to keep the power bank module running uh, without turning off. So it's consistently outputting five volts on the output without turning off. And that depending on the project might be enough. If not, then adding a resistor as indicated on the output terminals will make the power bank last um, uh, a bit less than without it, but it will keep it on providing steady five volts for the project that we want. Now, depending on the application, we may be able to pull some load on the output so we can keep the power bank on, but that's, as I said earlier, that's a project for the next video. Now, if you like this video, then I'm sure that you're going to like this one and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.